Hello and welcome back to Another Cafe. My name is Isaac and welcome back to the Tekkit tutorial. Today we're talking about Atomic Science. Atomic Science is a mod that's just been put into the new version of Tekkit uh, in the latest update. If you didn't see the update video, there's a link on screen. You can go check it out, see all the other mods that were added and so forth. Now, uh, before you watch this video, I recommend you go and watch the um, How to Generate Electricity in Tekkit video tutorial that I did uh, a while back now. If you've already seen it, you'll be fine, but you just need to know how uh, redstone energy conduits are made and used and how to make and use a redstone energy cell. So. Let's get into it. To begin with, I have an unlimited water source here with a pump for a uh, redstone pump, for redstone engines even, and uh, just some waterproof pipes pumping these out into these machines. Now these are machines are the ones that are added by Atomic Science. So first up is a chemical extractor. Now I'll put the recipes on screen for these as I go along. Uh, a chemical extractor is made using four bronze, two elite circuits, two pistons, and two steel plates as, as shown on screen. Now I'm going to go through some uh, how to make some of these things straight away because they're used in almost everything. So for example, bronze is made using um, an induction smelter. I'll put the recipe on screen. You need three copper and one tin in an induction smelter and it will make you bronze ingots. Uh, steel is made, steel plates are made using four steel in like a crafting bench two by two uh, shape. Uh, and then steel is made using steel dust, which is made uh, using uh, iron surrounded by uh, coal in the configuration on the screen. So it's just one iron, four coal makes steel dust, which you then smelt to make steel, which you can then use to make steel plates. And finally, two elite circuits, which are actually quite complicated. Elite circuits are six gold, a lapis block in the center, and two advanced circuits either side. An advanced circuit is six redstone, one diamond, and then two basic circuits, I believe. And a basic circuit is four copper wire, four redstone, and a bronze plate. The bronze plate, obviously, is just four uh, bronze in a little square. Whew. Right, okay, all that's done. So you're going to need them all the way through the video. This is the, they come up a couple of times, so I'll just get them all out of the way straight away. Uh, so yeah. So to make a chemical extractor, it's just four bronze, two elite circuits, two pistons, and two steel plates. So they're not cheap. It is more of a late game uh, fuel source. But when you do manage to get all this stuff set up, it is, uh, it is very rewarding. So what you do is you get a chemical extractor. Uh, you're also going to need sorry, a nuclear boiler. A nuclear boiler is made using four steel plates, two furnaces, a piston, and a bucket. And finally, you're going to need a centrifuge. A centrifuge is just four bronze, two pistons, two steel plates, and an advanced circuit. Okay. So once you've got all three of these machines, you're going to, want to line them all up like this. Uh, this water is actually pumping underneath to the chemical extractor and the nuclear boiler, because these both need water, so you're going to run it like that. Uh, you need to power all three of these machines. Here I have a full uh, redstone energy cell with uh, redstone energy conduits powering them out. Do not forget to uh, use your wrench to turn that around, because that's facing like that. They will not power them. You need to have it like that. Uh, it's just a right click with your wrench. So here is how it works. Now you need some u uranium. Yeah, uranium ore. I thought it was uh, uranite ore, but it's uh, obviously a, a different version of uh, of atomic uh, science. So what you need to do is you need to get your uranium ore and you need to put it into the chemical extractor. Now what this does is it turns uranium ore into yellow cake. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because you can just use a nuclear boiler and you can just put uranium uh, into this. And what it'll do is it'll turn your uranium into what's called uranium hexafluoride. You can't really see it there behind all my stuff. But it's called uranium hexafluoride. And this will automatically get put into this. Where because they're next to each other. Uh, you don't have to have them next to each other. You can have pipes connecting them if you want this further away for some reason. Uh, but see it'll make uh, it's transferred it straight over. There you go. You've got 0 0.4 dm cubed. Which I believe is decimeters cubed if my uh, chemistry ed education has taught me anything. Of uh, uranium hexafluoride. But if you put the uranium into a chemical extractor first, it will make three yellow cake. And you can then put yellow cake into the nuclear boiler. And then this will also, in turn, each one will make uh, 0.4 decimeters cubed of, uh, of a uranium hexafluoride. So it's basically like a macerator for the, uh, for the uranium ore. It will make more, you'll get more uh, uranium hexafluoride for, for your ore, basically. And I recommend doing this because uranium is not that uh, common. Now what this will do is it will put it into the centrifuge and then the centrifuge will spin it around. Uh, it usually takes quite a while as you'll see here and that will what that will make is it will make uranium I can't spell uranium it will make this uranium 235 not 238 it will make uranium 235 or enriched uranium and this is what we need because the first uh, power source that we're going to make is called a fission reactor and the fission reactor runs on fission fissile fuel cells even and fissile, fissile, I can't speak. Fissile fuel cells are made using six empty cells and three uranium-235 down the center, as shown on screen. So as you see, this is just going to take forever. So I'm going to move on to this here. 
Okay, so to make a fission reactor, you're first going to need a, the fission reactor block itself. Now, in order to make a fission reactor, the recipe on the screen, you need four steel plates, two pistons, two advanced circuits, and an empty cell. You're also going to need nine reactor turbines. Reactor turbines are four bronze plates and a piston. Then you're going to need, and then that's all, all you really need for to, to produce energy. You need that, some uh, redstone energy conduits, and a, an empty cell. But if you want to make it safe, and you want to be able to control if it's on or off, then you're going to want a thermometer, and the thermometer is made using eight steel ingots surrounding a handheld thermometer. A handheld thermometer is four steel, four glass, and a basic circuit. You're also going to want a control rod, and a control rod is just three iron, and then you're going to need a stick piston, some redstone, some water, and then fissile fuel rods that we talked about earlier. So I don't need these things, so I'm just going to grab all this stuff here if I can. Can't grab it all, but we need this first. So what you're going to do is you want to fill up this with water. As you can see here, you might first actually want to, uh, let me just get rid of some of this. You're also going to need some uh, some building material if you do not have that already. Uh, I'll grab some of those in a minute. So what I'm going to do first actually is here, you're going to want to set up your sticky piston. Uh, two down like that. Uh, is that right? Or is it going to, want to, it's going to want to be there, sorry. Sticky piston and then a control rod on top of that. And basically, oh, there's a hole in the floor. Okay. What you want to do is, over this side, or wherever you actually want to put it, to be honest, uh, we'll put it back here. You're going to want to put uh, your thermometer like this, because your fission reactor is going to go in the middle like this, and when it's on, when you give it the fissile fuel rods, it's going to start uh, like spinning around, heating up the water, and spinning the turbines. But, as you can see on here, it's got a little temperature thing on there, and if the, um, if the fusion uh, fission reactor gets above 2000 degrees centigrade, it's going to uh, it's going to blow up and it's going to take all your other stuff with it. So what you can do is you can have redstone coming off of this, like so, and then round and connect it up to your uh, sticky piston down there, which you can then which and then when it gets to a max temperature, you can change the max temperature there. Like I've changed it to one nine hundred. Uh, I'd recommend one nine hundred just to be safe because I think at two thousand it can actually blow up. And then at one nine hundred, what it'll do is that piston will fly up, the control rod will turn this off, and then it'll slowly start to go back down. The turbines will still spin, and uh, and you'll still be getting power, but it'll just slowly get cooler and cooler and cooler, um, until it's at a safe temperature again. So now we've got all that in. Let's put some. Let's fill this back up. Actually, before the water goes everywhere, and we need to fill up this with water again. So there you go. And then what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to shift click and put these tur uh, turbines on top of everything like this. As so, there's your nine turbines, and then you're gonna need your wrench. I don't need these things anymore. This, you're going to need your wrench, and if you right click in the middle with the wrench, it will make one massive turbine. So then you are going to need your redstone energy conduits. If you take them and do this, like so, bring it out and down, and connect it up to a redstone energy cell like this. Uh, again, you're going to want to change these to upwards. I don't think this one matters, but as long as this one is upwards, otherwise it's not going to work. And then what you're going to want to do is, I didn't really set this up nicely because I can't actually see this thing. Uh, you could always actually set it up like that so there's a hole in the floor. And so you can see this. This was in a stupid place. Well. So then you're going to need these fissile fuel rods. And all you have to do is just right click. It will take one in. And if we run around here, we should see a temperature increase. Yes, look at this. So now this is uh, actually heating up. Slowly it'll get faster and faster. These turbines will actually start spinning. There's actually an animation on them. And the hotter they get, the faster they will spin. And this will start to gain power. As you can see already, it's getting a little bit of power. but uh, And it's on again in small bursts because this isn't spinning very fast. So you sort of start and stop. But um, as soon as it gets really hot, like over a thousand, these will start spinning really fast. And you'll start getting loads and loads and loads of power. And then even once you turn them off, they keep spinning really fast actually. They sort of hover around 1600 for, for a very long time. And they work as a really good power source for, uh, for later on in the game which is really good. So that's how you set up a fission reactor. I'm now gonna go outside and show you how to set up a fusion reactor because we just do not have space uh, in this room. Okay, and I'm back. So we're outside, uh, the lab's just over there. And what you're gonna need for this in order to make the fusion reactor, now the fusion reactor is a bit more expensive than the fission reactor. In fact, in order to make the fusion reactor, you need a fusion block, this one here, the fusion reactor block. And in order to make this, you're gonna need four elite circuits, uh, four steel plates, and an actual fission reactor. So one of those that we made earlier. Uh, so you actually need that to make this. So that's like the first step and then this is when you want to upgrade and you've got all those more resources. Now the things you're going to need here are you're going to need these electromagnets uh, and you're going to need 32 of these. 
Now, in order to make electromagnets, you need either eight copper surrounding a piston or nine or eight iron surrounding a piston. So whether or not you've got more iron or more uh, copper just depends. Uh, and you're also going to need 32 electromagnetic glass. And to make that, you just get electromagnets and put them next to a glass. So one electromagnet, one glass in a crafting table will make that. And you're also going to need 20 reactor turbines, which are the same ones we made earlier. So I'm going to build this a little bit in the air just so I can show you uh, how it works. You can build it on ground if you really want to. But we're going to need a fusion reactor like that. And then what we're going to need to do is you need to surround this with these electromagnets like so. And then what you need to do is you need to come two more out like this. And then you need to again surround this with electromagnets just like this. Uh, with like, is it a 5x5 five five or 7x7? 7x7 seven seven? Uh, seven seven, like so. And what this will do is this is used to encase the plasma that is made by the uh, the fusion reactor. So what you need to do then is put the glass like this, uh, just sort of encasing like a nice little ring in the middle, like this. And then exactly the same on top, making sure that you have this nice, this, this sort of here, this sort of like uh, space in the middle for what is going to be the plasma to, uh, to flow around and, and heat up these electromagnets. So we'll just finish this off real quick. And then you're going to need some stone. Let me just quickly turn it to day because we don't want to work at night. You're going to need some stone. And what you're going to do is you want to go around it like this. Because what we're doing here is we're making like a little valley for the water to sit in. Because what happens is the the nuclear, not the nuclear, the efficient the fusion reactor heats up and then it heats up the uh, this it creates this plasma which gets really hot, heats up the electromagnets which boil the water, and then the boiling water releases steam which powers the turbines, which puts the power in your redstone energy cubes. So let's quickly finish this off. You need, you need another ring like this just so the water doesn't flow away, like so, and there you go. So now what you're going to want to do is you want to have some water. I'm just going to grab some from here. And you want to fill all this up here with water. There we go. So now that all this is filled with water, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your 20 turbines. And the reason I said 20 is because uh, I was testing it earlier. And for some reason, these three on the corner here do not seem to work. So uh, you, you can put them there if you want, if you've got the extra materials, but um, I don't think they actually add anything uh, to the power generation. So I'm just going to skip those out like this. You just fill it all in. And then what you're going to want to do is connect all these up like we did before with uh, redstone reception, not redstone reception coils, with uh, redstone energy conduits. So like this. Uh, you are still going to want to go around these corners because you need to connect them all up to each other. And the annoying thing is you've got to then go around again and use the wrench to make sure they're all pointing upwards. So I'm just going to quickly do that before I speed it up. Okay, and there we go. Now, there is um, a copper cable in this or a copper wire that you can that do actually connect to these. But I have, uh, I've, I've tried to connect them to the redstone energy cube here, this redstone energy cell. And they didn't connect. They also didn't connect to the new basic power storage. So I'm not sure if you can use those or not. Uh, if you do know, tell me in the comments down below. Uh, I'm sure everyone would love to know. So there we go. We connected all that up. And it works like this. Now, what you're going to need to do is, I believe we need some... Let me just find the atomic science section. It's here. We're going to need some of these. These are deuterium cells. And in order to make these, we need... I believe you need to get a chemical extractor that we had before, the chemical extractor. And then I'm just going to quickly go back and show you. So yeah, here we go. You get all you need is you need some empty cells. And then if you've got water and empty cells in a chemical extractor, it will produce, hopefully, some of these uh, deuterium cells that we need. And there you go, see that? So you don't actually need much. You just need the, the tin and the glass used to make uh, empty cells. I think I've showed you already. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so we're back. Now, you can just uh, get your deuterium cells, right click on there, and it'll tell you how many are in there as soon as you just look at it like that. Now, this thing does actually need some power to get started. So you're going to need a full uh, redstone energy cell like this, or just one with power in uh, at all. But I think I've figured out a way to make sure that you're actually, uh, to show that you're actually getting power. Because if you just leave this going, it will just keep taking power, keep taking power. And you do get a little bit more, but you don't like get leaps and bounds worth of power. So, if 
you connect this up to this like this and you change the output to 5 and then the max input to 5 as well what you can do is actually loop this round like this let's quickly loop it up and if you connect all these together what will happen now is when we turn it on let me just quickly if I could you just flick this it should turn on maybe oh we've got an empty one that's fine there we go see uh, it fills up with plasma and what it's doing now is it's taking energy from here nope uh, actually probably well uh, yes it is it's taking energy from here max input if we reduce that down to five like we did before and we reduce this down to five like we did before uh, now you'll see that it's exactly staying at the exact same mix. It's taking five in every tick and it's giving five out every tick. Uh, this is staying on. And this one up here should be gaining power. There you go. So there you go. That, now it's just it's going to use up some deuterium. It uses up a lot more to start up than it does to continue on. So I'd leave it on if you're going to do that. So that'll last you quite some time. Uh, I'll show you here that if I turn this off, it's going to, it's going to stop. There you go. So you do need this on. But if you uh, if you set it up like this, it should continue to work, and it should not. Let's like, see, that's not using or losing any power. It's continuing around, and all your excess power is here. So there you go. That's how you use a fusion reactor, a fusion reactor to make uh, power in the atomic science mod that is now in TechIt. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.